Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Claire. Um, if you've watched some of my past videos, you'll know that I love bright, bright contrasting colours. I'm going to do the opposite of that. I have chosen some pastel colours. Um, it's based on a, a friend's favourite colour scheme. Um, pastel colours. It really reminds me of spring, um, of Easter coming up. Um, so I'm going to do a pastel coloured flip cup and have some balloon dips in it to try and create some little pastel-y spring flowers. So I'm really excited to try this, something so different. Um, so let me show you the colours I'm using. So here are the colours. Just look at them. They're not they're not my colours at all. They're, I love them though. What a lot a beautiful colour scheme. Just so different from what I would normally use. So I'll go through them with you. Um, De La Rowney Pearl White, De La, Rowney, De La Rowney Cadmium Yellow Hue, but I've added some white, some Amsterdam white. So it's a really beautiful pale yellow. I've got so this is the Amsterdam white. I've been putting um, in some of them to to um to um what so this is the amsterdam white i've been using just to um make them a bit paler a bit softer i've got amsterdam persian rose i've got amsterdam sky blue i think it is yep uh, amsterdam sky blue light then i've got pebio studio acrylic silver oriental violet which is here i've mixed white with it oriental violet is transparent so i've mixed some opaque white with it to give this really beautiful pale color pale hopefully more opaque um violet color and then i've got gold iridescent gold and the iridescent green yellow they're all mixed with pva glue and water pouring medium and i'll put the recipe in the description of the video So I've put in a few drops of spot on treadmill silicon in each cup. So I'm now just going to layer up this nice big cup. And to show you the consistency, it's quite creamy, it's quite thick. It leaves the trail for a few seconds. Um, so for this pour, I'd quite like quite big cells. So I think I'm right in saying there's two ways to achieve that. One is to have thinner paints. So they're they are they're not too thick, but they're not they are still reasonably thick. Or the other way is to have more paint on your canvas. So if you've got more paint, you then you can then um, stretch it out a lot more. So that's what I'm going for. So I've got a I think it's a pint cup here, quite a large cup. And I'm using a 29 by 42 centimetre canvas, so it's not that big a canvas. Uh, oh dear, too full, never mind. Beautiful, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful cup. Wow. Right, let's get the canvas. So to flip this, I'm gonna put the canvas on top. I've got too much paint. Oh, I can feel it dripping. And then over. <laughs> But I want the paint. I want lots of paint. I've definitely got that. Right, just give that a minute. Right, let's flip this over. I'm just going to tip it and let it all pour out. I'm just going to put that there because I just don't want to waste any paint. So it'll be good. Any paint that's in there can just drain down. Just so I can get the, co the canvas covered as much as I can, as wet as possible. This is gorgeous. Wow. So far, so good. That is one beautiful cup. Right, I'm going to put gloves on. I'm just tipping it this way because it's 
it's quite close to the edge. Now, I don't often wear gloves because I just I hate the feeling of gloves, but this is, I know this is going to go everywhere. So the first thing I'm going to do is just try and get most of the canvas covered. I've got a corner catcher here, which is just a piece of cardboard. So let's get the paint. I think let's get the paint up here. I'm just placing that on there so the paint will collect in there without coming off the canvas. So I'm just not losing any paint yet because I want to keep as much paint on the canvas as I can until I want to really start thinking about my composition. So I'm bringing the weight of the paint round. So I'm coming up to this corner. this in fact I'll do that corner last because oh in fact no maybe I could go to it now because I don't need that bit on there so I can actually tilt that bit off no do you know what I went I'll put the corner catcher there because the weight of this will probably go over that bit let's see what happens kind of did I've still got a little bit of it but I think that's fine actually Right, I'm bringing the weight of the paint back to the centre. Let's take that off. There's a bit mist here, but I'm not going to worry about that yet because when I tilt this in a minute for composition, I'll hopefully get that. Right, let's start torching. Right, the yellow and the pink is stunning. I've got some lines there. I think I'm going to tilt that bit off. I don't like that bit at all. I think that will be the first bit to go. So the weight of the paint should be in the centre. And I've got quite a lot of paint on here. So I should be able to pretty well control this. Um, I'm a bit disappointed with this bit because there's not many cells there and I think that's just because the green and the blue were next to each other and there wasn't enough contrast between them. I think in hindsight I shouldn't have put those two together. Right, so I'm going to get rid of this bit here. Don't like that bit at all. So I'm just going to walk the paint down the canvas I'm going back and forward so that the cells don't stretch too much and elongate because I want them to try and keep their round shape. If I just pour this off in one direction, they will really stretch straight away. Right, that bit's gone. Let's just bring that back. Let's have a look. This bit is stunning. I love this yellow and pink. Okay, 
I'm not so keen over here. So I just wonder if I can come down the canvas to stretch out these ones. So I've got a balloon, I filled it with water. It's quite small, but it just means it's really heavy. So it's going to be able to um, push into the paint. I've also got, you can get a canvas or anything. I've got a heart here, it's a wooden heart and I've put gesso on it, so it's already primed. And I'm going to, um, once I've done the balloon kiss on the canvas, I'm gonna put it onto the heart, just so I can create something else out of the balloon dips, the balloon kisses. So these are very irregular, weird looking um, cells here. So I'm gonna first of all, do a little balloon kiss into there. This is so, so pretty. The colours are absolutely beautiful. Um, you can quite clearly see lines. Uh, so you can see where I've layered the cup, which is really interesting. Um, I think in hindsight, I should have waited until the paints had dried a little bit or made the, the paints a little bit thicker because the balloon kisses aren't keeping their shape perfectly. So what I might do as this dries, I might come back and just touch them again in the center of each flower. You can see the flowers much more obviously on the yellow section where there's more contrast. Um, and then in some other areas, so you've got, so for example there, where there's a, just a mix of colors, the balloon kisses aren't quite as obvious. I don't actually think it matters in the slightest because I think it just adds to the, almost the magic. It's, it's like a magical flower garden. It just the magic of the, they're almost almost camouflaged into each other. Um, the sparkle is starting to come through there on the green. Um, and what I love, this section here, do you remember this was just the orange and green section where you didn't get much contrast at all? Well, actually now, because I've done the balloon kisses, it's pulled up some of the paint from underneath. So you do actually get more colours. So um, really, really intrigued to see how this will dry. Um, but really happy so far and it will dry a little bit darker um, which I think will be good because it's just very very pale but it's, it's just something so different so I'm really pleased so I'll be back when it's dry so it's now totally dry and I absolutely love it it's just so tranquil and relaxing and soft and it's not like any of my other paintings um, it's it's just so calming somehow um, the one of the best bits I think is so to see how iridescent it is because so you can see the gold there but here look can you see the pearl white iridescence um, and then over here the green iridescence um, it's just it's it's just so so pretty um, let me show you close up um, the kisses have actually dried really well I was so worried that the paint was still too um, too wet that, that it was just, they were just going to um, move as they dried and then not be obvious afterwards but they, the kisses still are obvious I do think in hindsight I should have waited let the paint get a bit thicker a bit tackier as it starts to air dry and then done the uh, then dipped the, did the balloon dips the balloon kisses uh, that was just me being impatient um, but it's very I just feel like it's very abstract because it's just chaos there's just flowers blooms cells everywhere um, 
it's it's just a bit crazy um but i just think it works um not sure what i'm going to do with it yet whether i will leave it like this um i had wondered about using it for the base or the background of something else some sort of embellishment i'm not really sure um i'll see if anybody anybody wants it like this first i think great thank you so much for watching please let me know what you think do leave me comments um, and please do consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks everyone. Bye.